Alrighty, so it's been a while since we've done one of these, but I'm back anyway. 2015 and 2016 were strange years for Formula 1. Nico Rosberg finally defeated his old rival, Valtteri Bottas drove his Williams car to places that it should not have gone and even took it to a podium at the 2016 Canadian Grand Prix, and now he's sort of prime Mahave Ragunathan. Force India rocked one of the coolest Formula 1 liveries of all time and, in 2015, we had the dream team, Roman Grosjean and Pasta Maldonado. Well, what we also had were two drivers with almost identical names, and if you think Crofty struggles now with names, imagine how the poor lad felt when confronted with these two. The two in question are Felipe Massa, world champion for all of 38.9 seconds in 2008. And uh, that's, is that clock? Is that clock going slowly? It is, that's clock! clock. And Felipe Nazar, who I believe is a driver far better than his career in Formula 1 suggests. So, today we'll be asking the question, Felipe Nazar, is he Formula 1's lost talent? As we do in this series, we'll start from the very beginning, and Felipe was born in Brasilia on the 21st of August 1992. He began karting at the age of 7, and between 2000 and 2007, he was quite successful in Brazilian championships. Felipe moved to actual cars in 2008, where he debuted in the 2008 Formula BMW Americas Championship in the final round of the championship at Interlagos. He scored finishes of 5th and 3rd places, which was a super start to his career. For 2009, he was in Europe, competing in the 2009 Formula BMW series. In this series, he would win the championship by well over 100 points from talented names like Robin Frins and Danny Juncadella. With five wins, and he finished first or second in every single round of the championship except at Silverstone, which was a minor blip in his results. That's still a superbly impressive season for a man who was in just his first full season in an actual car. He competed as a guest competitor in the Formula BMW Pacific, taking two wins out of the three races he competed in. 2009 was a stellar year for Felipe. In 2010, he moved to the British Formula 3 Championship and he would win just the one race at Rockingham, ending up fifth in a championship totally dominated by Jean-Éric Verne. This isn't too bad considering he was new to the series and he picked up a few other podiums for his efforts. He also flew out to Macau and finished 11th in an impressive field featuring Valtteri Bottas, Jean-Éric Verne and Roberto Meri among others, so this was a decent performance at the prestigious event. 2010 wasn't quite as fantastic as 2009, but still pretty respectable. 2011 meant another season in the British Formula 3 Championship and he would win the title, edging out Kevin Magnussen to the crown. He took seven wins and an array of podiums to seal the deal. He also headed back to Macau, qualifying in sixth and taking podiums in both the qualifying races and feature races. He was in a competitive field, as Macau always is, and so this was another solid performance in a career that was rapidly gaining momentum. In 2012, he moved up to GP2, and this would be another real test for him. Just before we dive into this adventure, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing as I'd love to do this full time one day. Anyway, now to GP2. After a podium in the sprint race in Malaysia, Felipe struggled for a little while, ending up 10th in the standings, having taken three more podiums as well, in sprint races at Silverstone, Hockenheim and at Spa. This wasn't a bad showing. GP2 includes faster cars, more competitive racing and is overall a far greater challenge and so his performances here are quite respectable. He also competed in a couple of other series as part time but with no notable results we won't delve into those too deeply. 2013 he'd be looking to impress Formula 1 teams and have some more assured and consistent performances and he moved from the Dams team to the Carlin team. This season was both quite good and quite bad, and whilst he didn't take a win all season, his seriously impressive consistency took him all the way to fourth in the standings, ahead of Marcus Ericsson and behind Fabio Lima, Sam Bird and James Collado, taking six podiums in the process. For 2014, he'd probably need to win a race to get a shot in a Formula 1 car. However, 2014 started well, as on the 22nd of February it was announced that he would be Williams' reserve driver for 2014. In GP2, he won four races and got an array of podium finishes to end up third in the standings, just five points behind runner-up Stoffel van Dorn, whilst Jolien Palmer won the title. For 2015, he finally got his shot in Formula 1 after a stellar junior career. Signed up by Sauber, and not only because this boy had some serious talent, but also because he was sponsored by the Banco do Brasil. And this brought the infamous yellow and blue livery to Formula 1 for Sauber. He was teamed up with Marcus Ericsson 
and expectations were quite low for Sauber considering they didn't score a single point in 2014 and they were really struggling off track financially, almost not making it to pre-season testing. However, in Australia, Sauber looked to be more competitive and Felipe would finish in an incredible fifth place, the highest place ever scored by a Brazilian driver on debut in Formula 1, whilst Marcus came home in eighth place and the team left Australia with a double score of points, 14 points more than their entire 2014 campaign and at that time they were actually sitting third in the constructor standings, above Williams, Force India and all the other teams in the midfield and only behind Ferrari and Mercedes. However, Sauber would gradually lose performance over the course of the season and yet Felipe still drove the yellow and blue ice cream van into the points consistently and ended up outscoring Marcus Ericsson 27-9. Admittedly, he did have far better reliability than his teammate, but his consistency and searing pace often dragged that Sauber car far further up the field than it should have been. Sauber kept the same lineup for 2016 and whilst the car got worse, Felipe and Marcus still did their very best to drag the car up the field. Whilst results compared to his teammate were pretty similar, it was looking increasingly likely that Felipe would have to move teams following the expiry of his contract at Sauber at the end of 2016. And here is where it gets almost as messy as an F1 2020 open lobby with simulation damage at Monaco. I'll set the scene. It's the penultimate round of the season. Manor had scored one point courtesy of Pascal Verlein in Austria. Felipe Nasa was running in ninth, meaning Sauber would leapfrog Manor in the constructor standings. Whilst Esteban Ocon was also running in the points for Mana, he would sadly slide down the field into 12th place. There was also rumours that Felipe was ready to sign a deal with Mana for 2017, but Mana needed the all-important 10th place in the Constructors to stay afloat, and Felipe denied them of that by finishing 9th. So he essentially killed his own Formula 1 career, and ended up seatless for 2017. Yep, still with me? Well, that's kind of how he ended up seatless. Mana went under in 2017 early on, didn't compete in the World Championship and so Felipe went to sports cars competing at Le Mans and raced a bit in Formula Scare Electrics. Wait, I use this joke far too often, sorry. He's currently racing in the WeatherTech Championship and competing extremely well in sports cars. So overall we'll ask, was Felipe Nazza worthy of a Formula 1 seat? Yes, his junior career is stellar and his consistency is unbelievable. Was he worthy of an F1 Championship? Do you want to know what I think? I think with the right machinery, he genuinely could have been championship worthy. Am I disappointed he never got a proper chance in Formula 1? Yes, I think he was quite hard done by. Do I think there's a route back for him into Formula 1? Sadly, I don't really think there is. The way the careers are planning out, I mean, stranger things have happened, but I do think it's quite unlikely. Now, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like and let me know what you think of Felipe Nazar down in the comments section below. Subscribe if you are new around here and you want to see Formula 1 content and I will catch you in the next one. Later, guys.